Hey, this is Dr. Barry. Let's talk for a few minutes about whether bacon and other processed meats give you cancer or not, or increase your cancer risk. I've actually been working on this video for a few months because the science and the, the expert opinion and the personal opinion are so convoluted and so muddied and so full of crap in many cases that it took me a minute to kind of get to the bottom of what actually was going on with this myth that eating processed meat increases your cancer risk and so that here's the video i'm going to tell you what i found and what i think you should do also i want you to understand that uh as full disclosure i am going to follow exactly what i propose that you follow in this video so let's talk about whether you should enjoy your bacon and other processed meats or whether you should avoid them because they'll cause cancer OK, if you know someone who's afraid to eat bacon or other processed meats because of the nitrate issue or the nitrite issue or the curing or the, the preserving issue might cause cancer, please share this with them. You can share it on your Facebook page or inside your your Facebook groups. I don't I never mind if you share. So let's get into this. First of all, I'm going to talk about the two things I always talk about, which are the common sense of the issue and then the research around the issue. And we're going to start with common sense because I think you should always start with common sense. So let's talk about this. So human beings have been curing meats using some form of sodium nitrate, nitrite, potassium nitrate, nitrite for at least 3,000 years. Homer talks about it long, long before our modern era. It, it was a thing that was done routinely. You had to cure the meat or it would spoil. And so our ancestors found out a way to do it. Now, back when they cured it, it contained much, much more salt, much more nitrates and nitrites than it, than it currently contains. And we don't really have any reports in, in the old, you know, texts or anything of people dropping dead of cancer all the time because they ate processed meat. Our ancestors back then were very smart, and very aware and very observant. I think they would have seen the pattern <clears throat> that if you eat too much processed meat or cured bacon that you die of cancer and they would probably stop that. So that's number one. Number two, the federal government since the 70s has limited, strictly limited the amount of nitrates and nitrites that can occur in processed meat. And so you can only have 10 parts per million of um, of uh, nitrates, which is basically, and a nitrate is basically a nitrogen with three oxygens attached to it. It's just a chemical ion. And you can only have one part per million of nitrite in cured or processed meat. And nitrite is a nitrogen atom with two oxygen atoms attached instead of three. And so nitrates, nitrites, nitric oxide, these kind of all just bounce back and forth depending on the pH of the environment they're in and what other substrates are available. And so a lot of people get confused about the nitrate, nitrite, which one's good, which one's bad. And so basically what I'm about to tell you, it may shock you a little bit, but human uh, saliva, you make nitrates in your saliva. OK, so when you eat a, a source of nitrogen, your body, the, the upper part of your gastrointestinal system absorbs that and it's put into your blood circulation and your body recycles it and you excrete it again as nitrate in your saliva, in your spit. Now, usually the body, if, if something's a poison, your body will immediately filter that out of the bloodstream with the, the liver or the kidneys or both, or it'll use the cytochrome P450 system in the liver to break that down, right, or to t attach something to it and then immediately excrete it, and you either urinate it out or you poop it out. That's how we get rid of poisons. But for some reason, even though nitrates are deadly poison and cause cancer immediately, your body recycles this and you excrete it in your saliva every day, lots of it, lots of it, way more nitrate than you would get from eating an entire pound of bacon, you excrete in your saliva every single day. You just keep recycling it over and over. It's almost like your body thinks it's good for you or something. And then the bacteria in your mouth can convert the nitrate to nitrite. Then when it's in the acidic environment of your stomach, it is converted to nitric oxide. You may have heard of that. We, we might talk about that again 
uh, later on. So yeah, your your body recycles it and you excrete it in your saliva so you can swallow it over and over and over. So I think the human body would have figured out by now if this were carcinogenic to get rid of this ASAP. Another thing is that's really weird, but totally true. I, I saw it in multiple studies, and I'm going to link a bunch of stuff down below so you can verify this. I don't want you to ever blindly believe my expert opinion or anyone else's expert opinion, because often expert opinion is full of crap, as is the case in what we're about to get to. But I'll put the links down below so you can check this out yourself. Vegetables like lettuce and celery and beets contain huge amounts of nitrates. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And uh, there's actually research that shows that 80% of the nitrate that you ingest every day comes from vegetables. Yeah, not bacon, not salami, not pastrami, not bologna, none of the processed meats. You get very, very tiny, tiny amounts, 10 parts per million, one part per million from processed meat. You get 80% of the nitrates that you ingest every day from your vegetables. And our our, our vegan brothers and sisters would get 100% of the nitrates that they ingest every day from vegetables. That's where they get them from. And they they actually would get more nitrates on a daily basis because they eat so many veggies than people who eat lots of meat. And so you can see right away from the common sense, you're going, what, what? Yeah, it gets better. So, okay, the original research study, which wasn't actually research, it was one of those expert opinion things that I talked to you about a minute ago, from MIT, very, very preeminent, very respected university, right? It's been around more than 100 years. They said nitrates in food cause cancer, and they published this study back in, I think it was 79, 1979. And so turns out that this was not peer reviewed. There was no meaningful RCTs, no double blinding. This was basically just their expert opinion. But as is the federal, the federal government is wont to do, they very often do, kind of like they did with Ansel Keys. They just said, oh gosh, nitrates will cause cancer. We better make some guidelines right now. And so based on no research that, that was credible in any way, this was made into basically federal law, that nitrates will cause cancer and that you had to limit the amount of nitrates and nitrites that you put in your processed meats if you were a meat processor. And so it kind of reminds you of the Ansel Keys seven country study uh, episode where basically based on flawed, non-peer reviewed research, all of a sudden now we have federal guidelines of how you should eat. So, yeah, that's this is where this all started was an MIT publication that said nitrate causes cancer in rodents, not even in hu humans. And the federal government immediately put some guidelines in place to protect us from this imagined threat. And so uh, in 1981, the National Academies of Science did a big review of all the available research. And they said uh, nitrates are absolutely no risk for cancer. They're not carcinogenic at all. Um, we don't know what they were talking about. Then in 1983, the National Research Council looked at this subject again, and they said, and that's where we come to the conclusion that the original MIT article was based, it was never peer reviewed. And so what peer review means is, is I'll write a research study and then I'll send it to 20 other doctors and I'll let them read it and, and they'll try to pick it apart and they'll try to say, oh, this is not, this is wrong. This is factually incorrect. There's no research to back up this statement. You made this statement. Wait, your expert opinion is based on nothing. And so then that wouldn't get published if it was full of crap. But the MIT study was never subjected to peer review prior to publication. So it just got published and it was gospel. And so the in 1983, the National Research Council said, yeah, that 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 uh, study had fatal flaws. That's a quote for what they said and had no peer review and shouldn't be acted on at all. But it was too late. The federal guidelines were already in place. And if you know anything about government, you know that once a law is enacted or once a guideline is in place, it's hell to get it reversed. And so that we still have this, even though it's based on literally no meaningful research whatsoever. Since the since 1983, there's been at least 50 different studies and different reviews of the literature that can't find any link between nitrates, nitrites, and increased cancer risk. Are you liking where we're going with this so far? So basically, in, in, in the 50 studies and, and reviews, they keep coming up with 
you know, maybe nitrites might actually, I mean, not nitrates might actually be healthy for us. Because remember I said earlier that nitrates and nitrites can, can easily form nitric oxide, which you may have heard of before. It may sound familiar. It actually dilates our blood vessels. And so it lowers high blood pressure. And it also helps with erectile dysfunction. And so we're actually now, there's ongoing research to use nitrates therapeutically as medicines to see if they can't make a nitrate pill that will lower your blood pressure and help with ED. No joke, no joke whatsoever. And so all of the opinions that you hear out there, oh, bacon causes cancer, red meat causes cancer, nitrate, nitrite. Yeah, it's all based on nothing, literally less than nothing, actually. If you flipped a coin, it would be uh, more respectable than what has actually happened since 1979 on this issue. So please stop worrying about processed meat. If you're worried about nitrates, then you need to stop eating vegetables because they contain thousands of times more nitrates than processed or cured meats. Another thing you might you might find this interesting. This is actually federal law. If you use, if you make a nitrate in the in the factory, right? And so sodium nitrate, potassium nitrate, even though it's the exact same molecule, you have to disclose that and you have to limit how much you put in processed meat. But if you use celery salt, which you remember celery is very, very high in nitrates, you, you can say that your meat is nitrate and nitrite free, even though it's full of nitrates because they came from celery. True story, federal law. And so uh, you, if you watch many YouTube videos about this, as I've watched a ton trying to do this research, meet, uh, meet uh, people at the USDA, they'll just dance around this issue. They'll be like, well, you know, we don't consider that to be, uh, you know, an artificial source of nitrate. So it's, it's legal to put in the meat. It's the same exact molecule. There is no difference between this sodium nitrate and this sodium nitrate. It's just where they came from. That's the only difference. And so, yeah, it makes no sense whatsoever. So if you're worried about nitrates, stop eating celery, stop eating lettuce, stop eating uh, beets because they are loaded with nitrates. Uh, my, My vegan brothers and sisters out there, you really need to cut back on the veggies because I worry about your cancer risk from getting all that nitrate. Of course, I'm joking. I'm not worried about your risk at all of cancer from nitrates. So it's fine to eat your bacon. Your bacon is good for you. Your processed meats are good for you. They will not cause cancer. I defy anyone to show me a research study. Now, of course, the World Health Organization and the the, uh, ARIC and uh, all these guys are saying, oh, this causes cancer. It's as bad as a cigarette. But then you look at what they're talking about, and it's based on a very few observational perspective studies, no randomized controlled trials, and all the research is based on the food frequency questionnaire designed by Dr. Willett. And so at that point, their research becomes ridiculous because it's based on no meaningful data whatsoever. So enjoy your bacon and and enjoy your processed meat and also enjoy your veggies. I don't think the nitrate in veggies will cause cancer. You know, you get 80 percent of your nitrates from those veggies. Also, I don't think the nitrate, the tiny amount you get from processed meat is going to cause you cancer in any way whatsoever. So everybody take a deep breath and relax about the nitrate issue because it is, in fact, a non-issue. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please take one second and click that little subscribe button right there and maybe even click the bell right beside it so that every time I get a bright idea, you'll be one of the very first people to know about it. And then if you really enjoy my videos and I've helped to improve your health in any little bit of way, click on the Patreon link down below. It's a quick sign up and you can throw a buck or two my way to help me have more time to make more videos just like this one. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.